Welcome to lesson three of the Better Sax Beginner's Course. So far, we've learned how to set up our mouthpiece and read in lesson one. Then we learned how to make our first sound with a good saxophone embouchure in lesson two. Now, let's learn how to put the saxophone together properly and where to place our hands and fingers. At this point, you should already have your mouthpiece and reed set up and on your neck as we learned in lesson one. You may want to put your mouthpiece cap on right now. In the beginning, you're going to be much more prone to reed damaging accidents. First thing I do when getting my saxophone out of the case is I put my neck strap on. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's pick up the saxophone with one hand. When picking up the saxophone with my left hand, I hold it right here in the middle, putting my fingers through this bell to body brace that's here. This gives me a nice solid grip on the saxophone in a place where there's no keys I need to worry about. Now we're going to attach the neck to the body of the saxophone. First, make sure your neck screw is loosened. Then gently place the neck tenon inside the body as straight as possible and give it a little twist. This helps it to go in there a little bit smoother. Once the neck tenon is all the way in, line up this key that sticks out right here with the middle of your neck and tighten the screw. When picking up the saxophone with my right hand, I hold it in the same place. In the middle, again, sticking my fingers through this bell to body brace, giving me a really nice solid grip of the horn, again, in a place where there's no keys to worry about. This frees up this little ring here, which is where I'm going to take my other hand and attach my neck strap hook. Now we're going to adjust the height of our neck strap. You've got one of these things on there that can be pulled up and down to make it longer or shorter. If you haven't done so already, take off your mouthpiece cap. We're gonna make an adjustment that will bring the top of the mouthpiece up to the top of our teeth. We don't wanna be inclining our head forward at all. We want to bring the saxophone up to us. You see now the top of the mouthpiece comes right up to my top teeth and I can play while maintaining a very straight and upright posture. Now for our hand and finger position. Let's start with the right hand. Place your right thumb underneath this hook over here and then your index, middle and ring fingers will rest on these three key pearls here your little finger or pinky is going to rest on this key here. The right thumb is not meant to bear any of the weight of the saxophone. That's the job of the neck strap. Your right thumb is really just there to stabilize the instrument. For the left hand, start by placing your thumb on this thumb rest, hanging over the edge just enough so that the tip can action this key with a slight pivot. On the other side, it's a little bit more complicated since we have more buttons than fingers. Most saxophones will have four key pearls here, and you're gonna wanna place your index, middle, and ring finger on the three larger ones, skipping over the smaller one for now. There's another key above where my first finger is. On some older saxophones, this key is gonna have a key pearl as well, which kinda makes it confusing. So just make sure that this small key pearl is between your first and middle fingers. Now we're going to do some fine tuning to get everything in proper alignment before we play. We always want our head to be straight and not tilted to either side. So we're going to turn our mouthpiece on the neck cork in order to get the position just right so that when we're playing, we're putting even pressure on both sides of the reed. Alto, tenor, and baritone saxophones are all designed to be held on the right side of your body, especially when sitting down. When standing up, which is the way I play most of the time, I hold all my saxophones straight out in front and at a slight angle to the right. You're gonna to wanna to find the position for you where you can hold the saxophone with relaxed hands, your fingertips on the key pearls, and straight wrists. You see, 
if I were to hold this alto saxophone straight in front of me, perpendicular to the floor, it would cause my left wrist to bend in this way. And if I were to play like this for a long time, that would be terrible uh, hand position and could lead to injury. So by putting it slightly off to the side, it straightens out that wrist, which is much better for my health and comfort. The exact angle that works best for you is going to depend on your body, on how tall you are, on how long your arms are, and some other things. At this point, you may need to adjust the angle of your mouthpiece, the angle of your neck, or the height of your neck strap. You want to make all the necessary adjustments to get the saxophone to conform to your perfect posture. Now I want you to go stand in front of a mirror holding the saxophone and check the following. That you're standing straight up with good posture. That your neck is not tilted to either side nor front or back. That your neck strap is holding the saxophone high enough so that the top of the mouthpiece comes right up to the top of your teeth. That your fingers are resting lightly on the key pearls. That your wrists are straight. That your shoulders are relaxed and not hunched up and that your feet are flat on the floor about hip width apart. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a bunch of different notes. But for now, I know you're dying to find out what this thing sounds like all put together, so let's play one. I want you to press down all of the keys except for your little fingers, your pinkies. So in your left hand, you're going to press down the thumb key and then one, two, three. And in your right hand, you're going to press down one, two, three. Now you don't need to squeeze these down with a grip of death. Just put enough pressure to get them to close. Pay careful attention not to accidentally open any of the keys that you find near the palms of your hands. We'll find out what those keys do later on. Now put the mouthpiece in your mouth. Set your embouchure as we learned in the last lesson. Take a deep breath and blow a note for as long as you can. That's a D. If you're playing soprano or tenor saxophone, the note you got is going to be different than the notes you heard me play on the alto saxophone. This is normal and I'll explain why a little bit later on. I teach my students to start playing with the note D because it's got a lot of keys closed. In the beginning, it's much easier to play notes that have most of the keys closed than the ones that have most of the keys open. When playing this D, make sure your little fingers are resting lightly on their home keys. You don't want to be doing this. Now I want you to practice closing and opening all the keys to play that D very slowly, concentrating on keeping your fingers on the key pearls all the time. Keep your hands relaxed and your wrists straight. Get used to how it feels to hold the saxophone correctly. Try removing one hand at a time and then bringing it back to the instrument without looking allowing your fingers to find their homes. Take a few minutes right now and practice making this proper hand and finger position and posture a permanent habit, the way you pick up and hold the saxophone from now on. As I said earlier, in the next lesson, we're going to learn a bunch of notes. So if you haven't done so already, go to the link in the description below where you can download the PDF guide that goes with this course. There's a fingering chart in there that you may want to reference for the next lesson. Remember, all the other videos in this course can be found linked in the description below. Now before you go, be sure to click the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in lesson four.